Hey guys, Juan Navedo here with another color grading tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do basic color grading and color correction, actually, with uh, Colorista. So let's just dive right into it. All right, so here I have the clip. The clip, as you know, is a um, clip recorded with the Canon 5D Mark IV at 8 bit 422. If you remember the last time, that's those are very important numbers. Uh, when it comes to deep grading uh, footage. Has been recorded by my good friend, uh, Moises Batista. All right, so let's get started. Um, let's just go to effects here. I already put in Colorista, Colorista here. Make sure your clip is highlighted and double click on Colorista. I'm using uh, Colorista 4 from Red Giant Software. Uh, once you double click, just go to effects control and here we're going to use a uh, guided color correction actually. Uh, so it, that's the best part about uh, Colorista is that it, it, uh, it helps you out with um, a, gui a guided color correction. Uh, so just click on that and um, here we go. So it's guided color correction. Uh, let us guide you through the basic steps of color correction. Uh, after this, of course, you're going to do um, uh, color grading. It all can be done within Colorista, which is the best part about using this tool. All right, let's click continue. I know for a fact that this has been uh, shot on, like I said, Canon 5D Mark IV with the new, or maybe not so new, Canon Telecine. Or no, CineStyle, I'm sorry. Well, the Canon CineStyle picture profile, which allows you to uh, make your video flat. So we're gonna click on flat video because, well, that's what the clip is. All right, so you're gonna adjust your black levels. Here is the, uh, where they pretty much tell you, hey, put it here because this is what we think is good. Artistically, maybe, but uh, having done this and knowing what I want, actually, I want a little more information on my black levels. Next is the white levels. So you don't want it to blow up. So don't go all the way over here. This is what they suggest, but I have no idea why. Just, you know, what looks good to you and what looks good to me was around there. Uh, the midtones is the overall. It's a mixture of like the, the, the blacks, the whites, and, and what worked for me was right around here. Well, next contrast, you can really um, go very high on the contrast or me, I personally liked right around here. All right, saturation. If you go here, you're going to really like blow out every, you know, just too much color. As you can see here, it goes off the wheel. Um, color pushed against the outside. The circles are clipped. It may appear flat, and you don't want that. So just bring it down a little right around. Right around there. I think that's safe. Uh, color temperature. We all know it's a sunny day, so let's. Um, we could either go full orange, but the problem is it already started with it being outside the wheel, so let's. Uh, let's go a little. Just a little blue, and then the opposite with the tint, because you know the opposite of blue. That whole thing. And that looks a little good to me. You don't want to introduce too much purple. Now you could pick a neutral gray, but I honestly don't see anything here that's neutral gray. And that's pretty much it. Here's your before. Here's your after. Remember, we're going to color grade, so don't, don't worry about it. 8-bit, uh, it's pretty much good data. Uh, to work with 422 even better so you you can uh, take away or add information let's finish this and there it is um, again 
I work with proxy because system resources with the uh, screen recording uh, slows things down if I go full. So what you see here in the upper white is just proxy. Try your best to ignore this. Uh, so like the RGB curves in my last tutorial, what we can do is go down here to curves, RGB. Uh, and what you want to do is, let's see what you, mm, I like to crush the, uh, the blacks a little, but really come down on the, on the whites there down to like about 80, just to bring back that information, especially on the, um, the petals here. You want that information. Uh, and we can readjust this as we uh, start messing with um, with these uh, this three-way color for mid-tone shadow highlights. So now what you want to do is for shadows, you know, during the day, you know, the shadows are usually kind of bluish because of the uh, the earth Earth's atmosphere. Now we're we're doing some like artistic uh, color grading, uh, and for the shadows, you want to. And you don't want to crush them. Just bring them up a little. Just to bring back that information. Uh, the highlights. Uh, like, around, like I said, daytime. It's around orange. Around there. Uh, and the highlights you want to bring up a little. Not too much. Because you still want the information around here in the petals. Very, very important. Uh, to keep information, bring it back. I really don't mess with the color of the midtones. The midtones are just fine. You got your green, you got your purples. There's only two colors on the screen here, to be honest. Um, purple, pink, actually. Uh, maybe a little bit of yellow. So, three colors. So, uh, you could mess with the midtones a little. Let's see what, what that gives us. I actually like the looks of um, darker midtones. See how that brought it out a little by darkening? Brought this out, made it more vibrant. Made the green more vibrant. Uh, let's see. I guess we can mess with exposure a little. Let's see what negative point 10 does. Eh. Let's scroll color. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, negative 20 looks good. Going down to saturation. Now we could add or we could subtract now that everything is, for the most part, settled. We can mess with this again. Uh, I'm going to see what more saturation will do. That actually looks nice. Negative 14. Looks nice. Not bad. I'm not going to mess with the hue here uh, because it, it changes the green and the uh, the pink, purple-ish thing that's happening here. And it just changes them to weird colors. I could show you. Let me show you. Not a fan of, of, of that because I, I do like the original colors that these things were. And you don't really want to go the opposite way either because... Well, it just does something I don't like to the um, to the flower there. I, I actually like the natural colors that uh, the camera captured. So I'm going to leave that. Here is when you could uh, mess with the highlights, you know, bring them down, bring more information, or just really blow them up a little. Right around here. Actually, let's bring it down to 20. So you can have the whites, the highlights here, um, come up a little without losing any information. Uh, let's see. What else can we do with well, the shadows? Well, we have our information here. So now it all depends on you if you want more. 
I kind of actually like that. But I also like a round number too. 60. Uh, pop, I noticed that pop on Colorista is, um, to me, it, uh, it acts like a sharpen tool. Um, but if you go too crazy with it, it, it looks weird. So let, let's see, let, let me just show you with like 50. See what it did here. It, it's like, a, it's kind of like a sharpen tool. Let me, um, take off proxy and go full. I don't know what the YouTube compression, if you can actually see that very well. Um, but it, it, it really acts like a sharpen tool for that. I, let me go back to 10, uh, to zero and then up to 15, just to see what that does. See, so introduces like a sharpened tool, almost 20. So I like to do before and after. So zero and 20 just to see if it made a little bit of a difference. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it did. Uh, okay. And now everyone's favorite vignette. Uh, the reason why I'm doing a vignette is to, you know, I mean, there's really nothing going on here or here or here. The f focus is the, f uh, the two flowers two azaleas. I think that's what they are here. So, um, we don't want to get too crazy either. So let's isolate that with a vignette. But now we've crushed too much things. So, I mean, this is an artistic decision here, you know, um, we could come back a little just so it could be resting at, at zero. I mean, it's, it's so art artistic, even at, um, 30 here, you can still see, um, that I'm trying to center your focus onto here, this. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do, uh, with this, uh, you can maybe brighten that up, but then again, you get that faded look. I mean, that, that's something that you could, uh, be going for faded with a vignette, a vignette fade. Actually, that doesn't look that bad. Uh, if you like that almost dreamy look, um, me, I'm going to go down a little more, just a little more, keeping an eye on my scopes there. So there you go. It's like a contrasty yet faded. You know, you got your information in the shadows. You got your, uh, your color is there. Um, everything is represented nicely. Uh, so th th that is the basics of, uh, trying to play this <laughs> hold on one second proxy and then bring it down to one fourth so that we can have somewhat of a decent playback i'm gonna risk playing this back while i'm recording here we go oh uh, god it is choppy i don't know if you can see that on youtube but it is so there was no um like my last tutorial there was no clip or a uh, part of this clip that was uh, brighter or darker. This is just a steady shot at uh, at these two flowers. So it was very easy to grade this. It was easy to color correct. And you know, all you have is like a bit of yellow, definite greens and pink purple. There was being registered as pink purple. But this was for the most part, basic color correcting and basic color grading using Red Giant. Uh, what I believe is their infamous tool, Colorista. Colorista 4 is what they're up to, I think. So there you have it, the basics of color grading and well, color correcting then color grading using Colorista, everything done in one simple tool from Red Giant software. It's, uh, I, it's a lot, it's a go-to to a lot of colorists. A go-to tool. Um, I use it from time to time. It, it's it's really powerful when everything can be found in in one tool, where everything can be done in one tool. There's a lot more that you can do with this. Um, it, it also depends on the complexity of your project, uh, but for the most part, everything I needed was in this one tool. Everything that needed to be done with this one clip has been done. You could do a little more. You can do a little bit less. 
it's up to you. It's all, that's the one thing about art. It's all subjective. Uh, this is what looked good to me. Something else could look good to you. Maybe when I was playing with the hue, uh, something, you know, stood out for you that it's a look that you like and you can achieve that. Give the video a thumbs up if you found it informative. Subscribe if you would like. And I will see you on the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.